What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on Hannah's truck again. Um, we're going to try to get the four link installed and hopefully get these massive leaf springs removed. Uh, get the frame a little cleaned up. Um, remove a couple more brackets that have absolutely nothing to do with anything anymore. And um, that'll be it. Here we go. So if you guys are not familiar with what a four link does or how it works, what it does is it completely takes the place of this leaf spring as far as holding the axle in place. Uh, as far as up and down, that will be controlled by our airbag. So what you do is you take and weld you a, uh, a four link here, four link bar there, same exact place for the other side. And then in this case, uh, our other four link bar will go from here and then right where this bracket is for this leaf spring, it will go there. And then of course this will be cut off and then our C notch will go there. And that will do everything uh, as far as holding the axle front and backwards. And then our air spring will pick the truck up and down with the push of a button. So the first thing I've got to do is remove this cross member because our inner four link bracket will go here and exactly where this is. So this has to come out. Also, this would have to come out anyways because of the drive line. It would, when aired out, would be either really close or hitting this cross member. So we don't want that, we'll have to build a custom one. Also make sure since, if you were doing this, um, since we have already cut out the other cross members, uh, the frame has potential to move out of square uh, so what I've done is just tack welded this piece in here for the time being uh, with some really strong tacks and uh, making sure they have good penetration so that whenever I cut this out the frame doesn't move side to side but I will take measurements anyways just to make sure that none of this stuff moves and everything is perfect whenever we go to weld everything back up. So right now Hannah is putting on these brackets here that will weld onto the truck and she's checking the link between well let's see if the camera will focus but she's checking the length between right here and right here and there's a total of 40 threads on this or 39 threads actually so you want these to be adjustable as possible in case your rear end is not 100% in its place. So one of these nuts is four threads tall. So what we're doing is taking this all the way up and then counting 16 threads till it meets this. And then that gives us about half minus one thread, of course. Uh, that way, if we need to adjust it forward or back, we can science you stole my heart of gold after my silver soul can you take any deeper now i gave you all i own put you on this golden throne but i'm a little stronger now you cast in on my promises You know I'm too generous Now I've learned to never help you out Alright, so fast forward, we finally got this cross member out That took way longer than it should have, I think um, So I was originally going to leave these on here While I do the inner four link bars but they're not going to work with the angle of these brackets right here that they gave us uh, so what I'm going to do now is remove the leaf springs and then clean up that whole area and I'll do the outside bars 
first. And we went ahead and taken our measurements. I've wrote it down in a whole bunch of places. Got my pinion angle off of there with this angle finder here. And now I can go ahead and take off these leaf springs, this bracket, that bracket, that bracket back there. And also doing it this way first is going to be easier to uh, get our C notches lined up center of the axle. I got the uh, sway bar out and I got the I got one leaf spring out and a bunch more brackets and that's where I'm going to stop tonight it's getting pretty late I think it's about 1 or 2 a.m. by now and uh, I guess I'll pick back up on it tomorrow all right guys so it's a new day and I've got a couple hours to work on this truck um, so what I'm going to do next is go ahead and get this bracket off, this extra load leaf bracket stalker thing, then go over to that side, grind all those rivets out, get those leaf springs off. I do already have the sway, sway bar off. And then uh, go ahead and cut the mounts for the leaf springs off of the axle. And check all the pinion angles and everything, and uh, then we can go ahead and weld the four link on on the outside bars, and then figure out the inside bars as we go. Here's a little update. I broke it off. This leaf spring is all Let me tell you what, these things are heavy. If you drop one of these on your foot, man, you can probably go ahead and kiss that damn thing goodbye. Um, all of these are ground off, but the way it is, this there's two under this bottom piece here, and that is what's making it so hard for me to pull that one off actually have to pull this bolt out or if it won't unscrew then i'll just have to uh, cut it out and then it'll come off so i'm going to do that and then cut that off and as you can see the frame has already dropped um, very clearly hitting the frame and this is where a c notch is going to go so the frame can go even lower all right guys so here's an update i've got this leaf spring all the way off that bracket off and then these leaf spring mounts on the axle i've got them cut off i've got this partially off but this thing just will not come off this is the upper shock mount uh we'll have to be uh we'll have to build new ones anyways but it will not come off it's completely ground off here and there but it still won't come off so i'll have to figure that out uh same i'm sure for this other one so next thing i can do is go ahead and pick up the pinion right here the front of the axle right here and then set my angle and then i can set my distance to make sure it's exactly the same as where it was then i can grind off a clean spot here and on the frame and do my outside four length bars so that's what we're going to do next all right guys so we have now checked the measurement side to side 
you know, so that the tires are in the middle of the bed how they're supposed to be, or, well, you, you know what I mean. Uh, the width between the frame and the wheels is the same. And uh, we measured to this, not to the tire, because the tire can obviously uh, differ in many, many different ways. Uh, we've checked the pinion angle. Pinion angle is correct. Side to side is correct. And front to back is correct. And don't be afraid to check this about 15 billion times. I believe I've checked each one at least 60 times because if this is not perfect, your whole ride's gonna be screwed up. You go down the road and it looks like your rear end is just going sideways if you mess this up. So now what I can do is go ahead and pick a spot on the outside for my outer four link bar, clean it, tack it up, and then do the same on the other side. Now, the first one that you do doesn't specifically matter where you put it. Now what I mean by that is you could put it here, you could put it here, or you could put it here, uh, you know, if, if your kit allows to go at that much of an angle with it. But when you go to do the second one, the important part is to get it exactly the same. So when I say that's not important, the first one's not important, what, I'm, what I really mean is both of them have to be exactly the same. The first one is important, but in a different way. Um, meaning, make sure you get the second one exactly where you get the first one. Measure it 500 million times, measure the angle, everything. So I've found the spot that I want this four link bar. And it's gonna kinda come down right here and then come down right here and then across. And then I've cleaned off all of that bottom where I'm gonna be welding that. Make sure even when you weld these prefab pieces like this, you take a flap disc to them and get all that mill scale off. That way it doesn't contaminate your weld in any way. Same goes for this side. And especially the spots on this old metal here, you definitely, definitely have to get it clean before you do any welding on it. Well, here are the outer bars mounted. These are just tacked on at the moment. Everything's placed exactly how it should be. About to weld them up. Really like the way that they look. Can't wait to get the C notches on here and get this thing up and down. So I've got the outer four link bars welded on. Solid. I welded those bottoms on also. Looks pretty good. Welded the inside of those also. Come over this side, you might be able to see it a little bit better. There's the backs. Looks pretty good. And I guess now we can work on the inner four link bars. So before I install the inner four link bars, I'm actually gonna go ahead and make the C notches. I'm gonna make it out of square tubing, two inch by four inch, one eighth wall. Um, the reason being, I've got to make a cross member and I have to notch the cross member and I have to modify these brackets over here so that they fit with this uh, and work with this cross member. Um, but I need the truck to sit low before I mount those just to make sure that those are going to work 100% guaranteed. So the first thing that I've got to do before I do that is 
do my C notch. Um, so what I've done is just made a cardboard template and uh, let's see. Give you an idea here what it's going to look like. Something along the lines of that. And this took a long time to uh, get correct. A lot of test fitting and measurements over there. Uh, got my center line, got my center line on the frame and the axle. Um, and then I made sure that this angle was correct on the frame also so that it would sit all the way down into the frame and I would have more to weld onto. And then this same thing, but I just made sure everything was square. A lot of measuring, um, a lot of angle finding. And uh, what I'm gonna do is cut this out here. So essentially this is how, right now, how it is, is simply, a straight piece like that and I need to cut these angles out and I'm not going to cut the top I'm just going to cut the other sides and then fold it in like this and then the same with this fold it in like that and then I'm going to weld those up and make some uh, some fish plates I'm not sure what shape yet but something cool and uh, we'll go from there So here's the C notch. Turned out really good. Like I said, still going to put some fish plates on it. I believe that's what they're called. Uh, just to make it just a little bit stronger. And uh, so let's go ahead and make the other one. What's up guys, so I've got both of the C-notches made for the frame and uh, I'm going to show you how to install one of them. The other side will technically be the opposite but exactly the same if, if that makes any sense. Um, so I've already done one side and I'm going to show you that now. I haven't finished welding it up yet but I've got most of it welded up and I've got the center of the frame cut out already. So here is one of the notches, most of the way installed. Um, so I've got that part welded. The parts that I still have to weld is here, down here, and then across here. But I've got this welded, and I've got that welded, and I've got the inside of this welded. Same goes for the other side and inside as well. Uh, I wouldn't cut the center out unless you have at least that much welded. Um, I didn't want to go ahead and weld these because I wanted to try to make them really pretty and, and then run that one into this all being one bead. We'll see about that. Uh, I might just have to stop and um, make a second bead anyways but 
It's turning out really good so far. As you can see, it has plenty of clearance now. And I mean plenty. Um, this is sitting at about stock height or around it, maybe just a little bit lower than where it would originally sit stock. But once we get the air ride on it, this thing will never go back up to stock height. So you guys, you want to get your notches identical on each side. You want to make sure everything's level, everything. So make sure the frame's level, front, back, side to side, both ways. And then you want to make sure your notch is level. So that's why I was talking about earlier in the video, these cuts are really important as well. So the first thing you need to do is find the center line of your notch. In that case, this is uh, eight inches, so four inches is my center line. Easy enough. Now this is a little bit more tricky because I don't have a dangly Christmas tree to tell me center line of my axle. You want it to be the center line of your axle so that when you air out, you don't come up and hit your notch. Also, always give more uh, room in your notch than the size of your axle, just in case your measurements are off somewhat. Plus, it looks just a little bit better and heavy duty, in my opinion. In my case, I have a four inch axle and I put eight inches of gap uh, right here to here. Um, I just thought that looked the best uh, for this application. Uh, for this big of a truck and everything. So that's what I did. You do it however you like. But to find my center line, I took this here, this um, meter stick, whatever this thing, a straight stick here, and uh, held it straight over the axle. And then I made sure it was at 90 degrees with my angle finder here. And then I marked these two lines and then you mark your center line in between those two lines that gives you the center of your axle now what you can do is match up this center line to the center line on your notch and then you can get the marks for where you would like to cut this because this needs to be pretty exact these cuts here you have to be able to weld those so those need to be within an eighth of an inch or less uh, in my case i got it literally perfect and actually had to trim some off of the underside of it just so it would fit so set up your notch and then take your marks you can see my center line here hopefully the camera will focus so after cutting off some more, uh, some more brackets from the shocks and something else, for, I think for the trailer brake, you can come over here, line up your center line on your frame. notch then that gives me my marks to cut so I make a mark here the mark on the back really doesn't matter and then just a straight cross cut right here the same here make a mark there use a square make sure it's straight also the back cut does not matter because you're cutting this out anyways and then a straight cross cut here again then clean everything up Clean the inside of your frame where you're going to weld. Don't break your toes off. Um, and then you can go ahead and tack it in place. Check all of your angles, your measurements from, make sure you can, you know, say from here, for example, to, you know, the top of the notch or however you want to do it. Check your square, you know, go from that corner, this corner, that corner, this corner. Uh, whatever you got to do to make sure everything is right 
double check your work, triple check your work, quadruple check your work if you need to. Don't be afraid to check your work. This needs to be correct. So here is the top cuts I'm gonna make. Uh, I come back further than I needed to on this plate here. And that's only because I want to cut back behind this plate and get rid of this. Um, like I said, it doesn't matter how far you come back. But, um, you know, just make sure your very front and very rear marks are exactly how they're supposed to be. And then I also try to make sure that this line here is out of this bend. And as soon as that flat part starts. If not, you can always grind it down on the inside and make sure it's flat then, um, which I always double check everything anyways, but now we can go ahead and cut these out and then we'll go ahead and clean the inside of this frame so that we can weld it. My cut pretty darn perfect this is how you want it uh, well not like this you want to be able to trim out a little bit more of it and uh, have it about like that so I'll trim these corners and then uh, clean up everything and weld it up all right guys so sorry about that the battery died to my camera and I had to let it charge before I could film anymore but as you can see I've got both of the notches installed fully welded up and um, looking really good really good so now I need to build a cross member uh, it goes from that side to this side and then I have to notch the cross member uh, so that the drive line has a place to go then I can uh, lower the truck and reset the pinion angle and everything and do the upper uh, four link bars. All right guys, so I've built my cross member and I notched it and gave room for the drive shaft. It's now tacked in place, squared up, all that good stuff. And uh, now I can mock up these four link bars which I will have to clean off these areas same spot on that side and then clean these and uh, then I'll have to find the angle that I need to cut on here because this angle here is not going to work so what I'll do is tack those in place exactly where I want them and then find this angle and cut it tack it in place do the same exact thing on the other side and then I'll come back to you after I've got everything tacked in place and show you all right guys got the four link on here mostly welded up guess I'm going to um, sit the rear end on the ground and uh, see how it looks well I laid it out and everything clears right now I've got it on jack stands I will uh, Put some pictures or something of it all the way laid out but that is going to be the end of this video i hope you all liked it and uh, make sure you subscribe to follow the rest of this build and i'll see you next time thanks for watching